Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for a great privilege to come before you. Lord, we again are grateful for your son. And we do thank you, Lord. Yeah, you have done great things for us, Lord. And you continue to do great things because you are great and greatly to be praised. And Father, as we gather now, I pray, Lord, that you might bless our time, that you just might uh, bring back to our remembrance all that was shared and even bring a measure of uh, enlightenment, Father, that we might go deeper in our understanding and most importantly, in our walk with you. So bless our time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, you know, this past Sunday we had the privilege to share, and we were talking about uh, out of Ezekiel 47. And uh, you know, we were talking about this issue, uh, really, as I as I titled it, a request that the Lord would water us, that He would water us. And we began to talk about and look at this issue, the, the illustration that was given there of a river and all that we saw and all the things that we could pull from that that issue of it being a river. Um, and the whole idea of, you know, our, our, our worship services and why we do what we do and what the focal point ought to be when we gather. Uh, because I you know, I've, I've been burdened a long time with the fact that, you know, the word of God is everywhere. We get word all the time. You know, there's word Sunday. We can pull up on the Internet, get word anytime we want it. But it hasn't made the body of Christ more effective. We just not affect. We're not anytime um, the world. I mean, the church no longer has the impact it once did. Um and the world is kind of seen as in the center of all that happens and the church is now on the peripheral. There's just something wrong with that, especially considering all that we get. Um, I think, as I said, I think the Lord equips us and he gives us all these things so that we can become more effective and make more of an impact in society. And so we looked at this. We looked at, and remember we went and looked at the valley, the, the, the valley of the dry bones. Remember we looked at that in Ezekiel 37 and we saw back that um, how, you, you know, it, when we looked at that text, we saw that the the body was already there. You know, the bones were there, but the structure was there, but the problem was there was no life. There was no life. So he spoke to the prophet and said, speak a truth to the bones. But then not only did they, had to, did they have to be uh, a truth, but they also had to be breath, which represented life. Okay. And, and, you know, we talked about this issue of uh, if, we, if we have the word, but we don't have the Holy Spirit, then we really don't have life. And I think that's the problem today. We got word. We got word all over the place. But the problem is there's no life because we, have, we, have real, we haven't realized that um, God, what God has poured into us is not designed to just sit there. It is designed to flow out and make impact outside of the sanctuary. But. The flow has to begin inside the sanctuary. Has to begin in there. We have to we have to be open to God doing a work in us first, so we can become effective outside. Um. So as we got it, we get into it. You know, one of the first things we talked about in the first point was this issue of the supernatural source of the river. You know, in verse one. Um. In fact, turn to Ezekiel forty-seven. Let's let's look at the scripture. Ezekiel forty-seven. As we kind of talk about this a little bit. Um. I'll read, couple, read a few verses, and may I'll read some more as we go along, but um, I'm going to read the first five verses, I think. He says, then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the temple. I'm sorry. There was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. Well, the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. And he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces east. There was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. And he brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my ankle. Again, he measured 1,000, and he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. 
guinea measured 1,000 and brought me through and the water came up to my waist. A guinea measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. I'll read verse six and he says, so he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? And he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river, okay? And so we, you know, we, we began to talk about this issue of the source of the river. And, you know, we looked at the idea of what we see here is that the water came from under the threshold of the temple. Okay, and we talked, we began to talk about, um, that's the picture of how low you can go or as low, it's as low as you can go. And we began to talk about the issue of uh, a humble source. Now, um, and the call for us today, well, let me say it like this. The Lord really begins the work in us and through us when we first go low. We, we go low. We've got to understand. And, and really, we have to understand who we are in relation to who God is. I mean, you know what happens. We get we get a lot of word. We get a lot of intellectual knowledge. And then we think we all that. <laughs> but the idea is to still go low. God is after humility. And he's after brokenness. He's after brokenness. And and we talked about this issue of laying on your face before the Lord. I mean, that's as low as, low as we can go in our position before the Lord. You know, in our, our position of worship is to go low, to lay out before the Lord. So, so, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, let's just stop there and just talk about that for a minute. What do you think about that as far as humility, the necessity of humility to be effective in order for us to be effective? Anybody? It's absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah. necessary. Uh, uh, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he'll exalt you in due time. That, mm -hmm. that humility is absolutely necessary. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the knowledge that we gain, it really just sometimes it puffs us up because yeah. it's like, you know, you've learned something new about Christ and, and you add that into your pocket and then it's like, you know, you keep adding those things, adding those bits of knowledge. And before you know it, you know, you're becoming legalistic or you're becoming yeah. high-minded and God resists you. God resists yeah. the proud, but he gives grace. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace Amen. you give to the humble. Amen. Amen. And it is a fight sometimes to, to be humble. Yeah. Given yeah. the level of information and knowledge you amass from the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we see mm -hmm. it in, we see it in ourselves, certainly. And we also see it in our Jewish brothers and sisters. I mm -hmm. mean, oh my gosh, they've got the word. They got the word. Yeah. They got the word, but they rejected the one, the one, the one. And I know that takes humility in mm -hmm. who that Christ is, who they've been studying from childhood. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else on that thought? Anybody else? I think it all. I keep it, it all. I mean, it happens to all of us. And um, I mean, as you learn, you can get a little, a little puffed up. And then sometimes when you read, I mean, you might have read that passage a hundred times, a thousand, and then that certain verse comes out to you and it just breaks you down. God's word will break you down. And, <laughs> and you prostrate yourself. It, it it hits you so strong. It hits you and you you can't help but bow down to the Lord and prostrate mm. yourself out. So well, mm. that happened to me. <laughs> so uh God's word is 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 powerful. Mm. Minister Mosley, sometimes we can do it in such a very, um, we can we can be high-minded in such a very different way. Um, I remember many years back, I went to visit my girlfriend in South Carolina. She goes to a little small church. And um, one day they said that the young deaconettes, and I was like, immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, here we go. What's a little deaconette? You know, and is that scriptural? Okay. But before, before, but my mind went there right away mm -hmm. based on what was in the word. But I'm telling you, Deacon, uh, Minister Mosley, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, 
uh, the, the young deaconettes were going to visit, and this was in August, they're going to visit sister so-and-so who had been sick. And I went with them, with my girlfriend. So we went over to this little old lady's house who didn't have air conditioning. She only had fans. It was in August down in South Carolina. Mm. And do you know, those little girls, they sang for the lady, had a word of prayer with the lady. And I'm telling you, they impressed me. They impressed me. They had very little, like I said, a little small church. But the <laughs> spirit of these young girls, when they visit Miss So-and-so, I can't remember the lady's name, but it so impressed me. And I said, now see, immediately my mind went to deaconettes. Is that in the Bible? But <laughs> when they demonstrated their love for Jesus, and willingness to go out on a hot day to a home that didn't have air conditioning to pray with this little lady and to see to her well-being. It, it impressed me immensely. Amen. 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 And isn't that showing the love of Christ? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Immensely. These were young teenagers, uh, maybe, uh, maybe about 12 to 14. Mm. And they called themselves the young, I think they, their, their titles were the young deaconettes. And um, <laughs> they just impressed me so much, the Amen. young ladies. Amen. And I just, I thought, now see, we would look down on, on a little church like that because we would think that they didn't have the word. But one thing they did have was the love of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Anybody else on that thought about humility? I mean, you know, James, as we talked about the book, uh, that verse out of James, James chapter four, verse 10, scripture says, humble yourself in, a, in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Um, but that whole issue of being, uh, when scripture says that he resists the proud. In other words, he pushes against the proud. He resists me. He, listen, I'm trying to get close to him and I can't figure out why. It's because that pride's in the way. Mm -hmm. It's in the way because I refuse to see myself as God sees me. I'll put it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I so, think when we look at scripture and we look at those people that God used in the word, they were all at their lowest before he could use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, Moses, who was living in the Egyptian palace, and, you know, had a big role, but had to flee. You know, after killing the, the Egyptian and out on out there with the sheep, you know, David out there on the sheep, you know, mm -hmm. even before he could use David, he had to break David down. David got yeah. into things, he had to break him down. Mm -hmm. As we look through scripture, we see whenever God has to use someone, he has to take them down. Mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, I always, I always have a disclaimer uh whatever i teach or do something i think i did it i shared it once before i always have a disclaimer i always say anything that you hear that's profound came from the holy spirit anything you hear that sounds stupid came from me uh, <laughs> because uh, you know and 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 I, I just realized that is that uh, uh every sunday i come in and i hear a sermon it reminds me of you ain't there yet buddy you know? uh, <laughs> And, and it, it brings us back on point or it lets us know where we stand. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as far as, as he is concerned, you know, and I, I'm at the age now, you know, where I'm still realizing how much I don't know. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. You know, it, 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 and so it, it always, you know, uh, you, you kind of think you go two steps forward, but you're actually going one step back. Mm. Uh, because you ain't where you think you are, you know? Uh, I always tell people, you don't have a spirituality meter. You can stick it in your ear and say, oh yeah, I'm right here, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. And, and, and that lets us know, uh, you know, that uh, we can't do nothing without him. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's right. nothing we can do without him. And whenever we step out thinking that we're, we're doing it on our own, we get in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Minister Mosley, one, one other thing based on what Deacon Cliff was saying, um, I think about Joseph, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and Joseph growing up, he never said to his father, 
Oh, 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 don't give me that coat. I don't want to be the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he took that coat and wore it like I don't know what. Yes, he and, did. Lorded, and lorded it over his brothers. Yeah. So, I mean, and the Lord had to, you know, bust him, bust him down a little bit before he raised him up to be second in command to Pharaoh. Mm -mm -mm. I, I remember what the pastor said in his sermon about Joseph when he was going through that. He said, do you think Joseph would have went down to Egypt on his own? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. No way. No way. Nope. And that's the same thing with us. Do you think we do some things on our own? You know, and say, oh, Lord, I think I'll do this for you. Like, no, I want to do for yeah. me first. Yeah. You know, and, and to direct us and say, oh, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Mm -hmm. I love that, Minister, uh, Minister Willis. Minister uh, <laughs> Tomlin. <laughs> I like that deep clip. Don't be prophetic. No, no. no I won't be prophetic. <laughs> but and also, as we're talking about these greats, these Bible greats, Paul, the apostle. Paul, yeah. Oh, Paul. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To break him down to the point of blindness. You can't yeah. see. Right. And in a place where you are totally broken totally yeah. i tell you lord and 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 the picture of the scales coming off his eyes yes. and that, that wonderful moment of realization he had the one i've been persecuting is the mm -hmm. one i've grown to know and 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 have yeah. known all these years i didn't make the connection lord but whoo mm. i know a mm -hmm. deacon cliff you made a good point that joseph wouldn't know where to Nope. Went down to Egypt on the road, and even that first opportunity, you know, when he interpreted the, the dreams, he told he told the guy, he said, uh, "Remember me there when you get out of here." Yeah. <laughs> get out of here. Lord had had greater plans. He's, you know, that it took two years because they had the, you know, mm -hmm. he interpreted the dreams, and and then the guy had to remember because those who wouldn't get out at that point, if he would have, you know, remembered him, those would have said, you know, I, I I'm unjustly charged. I, I need to go back. Yeah. But uh, God so arranged the circumstances, uh, <laughs> he lifted him up in one day. Mm -hmm. One day. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. When, well, you, when know, you, 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 you think about those, what we just talked about, we talked about Joseph, we talked about Paul. I thought about something that they both had in common, and that is that God did the greatest things in them while they were in prison. Yeah. Yeah. The scripture says, yeah. the scripture mm -hmm. says Paul was in the inner prison in mm -hmm. stocks, in the, not just in prison, he was the, in the inner prison, in, prison. Mm. in stocks, mm -hmm. and it's Joseph in prison while God was doing a work in both of them so they could do a greater work. Mm -hmm. So how does it start? He's got, you know, the Lord knows how to humble us. He knows how to do it, what it's going to take. Because mm -hmm. we hard-headed. Well, I'll speak for myself. I'm hard-headed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm hard-headed. Okay? We are. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we don't get it always get it on the first time. We don't. Mm -hmm. But, but, um, then he, he, we were also talking about this issue in terms of the source. It is also a holy source. It is a holy source. Because um, of the idea of that river flowing past the altar, right? The altar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know. I think about Romans. Romans says, you know, we ought to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. That now, Part of the problem with a living sacrifice is that the, the living sacrifice gets on and off the altar. Mm -hmm. We don't stay there. Mm -hmm. We don't stay there. But the idea is that for us to really be set apart, we got to get on that altar, stay there. Um, and so that's why he calls us, listen, that to not only be humble, but to be holy, to live a life, to purpose to be set apart so that God can use us. Because because a dirty sacrifice is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to be cleansed. Probably the best. That's why he says. That's why I had to flow past the altar for cleansing. He calls us to be cleansed so that we might be used. Mm -hmm. um, now, so how how is that done? I think pretty simple. I mean, you know, we even talk about uh, how we pray. Um, when we pray, what is it, what's the first thing we ought to do? 
Who's that, Sister Elise? What were we going to say? No, I was going to say the same thing you said confession of sin. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because I, listen, I've missed it somewhere. I missed it somewhere. somewhere. Thought life, attitude. This, mm -hmm. I, I missed it somewhere. So I got to make sure I'm cleansed. Every mm -hmm. time I go before the Lord, I've got to be cleansed. Um, but that's the whole idea because we, we're looking at this whole issue of the flow of the river, right? It says that the, the scripture says the water flows toward the east, okay? The idea of um, the sun rising in the east. So what happens when it's flowing toward the east is we ought to be heated. The river is heated. And if we are flowing in the right direction towards the sun, the S-O-N, that's how we begin to make impact in the life of others. What God places in us begins to be, uh, uh, it begins to be uh, shown uh, as we, uh, in fact, uh, or come around other people. Yeah, this we ought to be, we ought to be the most joyful people around. Mm -hmm. We ought to be the most joyful people around because why? If my heart is heated as hot towards the Lord, that ought to spill out on other people. But there's some folk, hey, say, I know the Lord, and uh, sometimes it's looking on their face and ain't looking too good. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know what I'm saying. Any thoughts about that before I go any further? Wait, you want to look like they were sucking on an onion pickle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but that's the idea. That is the idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we went, went on and talked about this issue of the course of the river, the course of the river. Um, now this whole idea of the river starting out as a flow, it was just like a really small flow. And then it increases in depth every third of a mile. You know, he talks about that 1000 cubits, it represents one third of a mile. Uh, and as, you, as it begins to flow, it gets wider and it gets deeper. Um, and we talked about this issue of the tributary. You know that tributary means there's another source, but this river grows without another source of river, of, of water. Now that's the call for us as believers to have the correct source. Now we're pulling from a lot of stuff, but are we really pulling from the right source? The, the right source. So I'll open that up for you. Any ideas, any thoughts about that? Because there's a call to grow. There's a call to grow. One thing that uh, I think about sometimes, and, and, it, and it disturbs me, but it's a worldwide wide problem when you take, um, I think about the Catholics and how many people are under the sway of that religion. And of course, it's good Catholics. You know, it's good people. But that doctrine that they're taught, I mean, they're believe in that is condemning them to to death and it's just so many people so um i just don't understand how they get how, how they can believe that when you had a bible and, and and they don't reference the bible and um it's it's really sad mm -hmm. So, for, for me, Minister Mosley, I was thinking about um, when you said source, there are times in my um, walk and devotion, I am meditating maybe on a song or on a book that I've read uh, about the Lord, but my, my heart gets convicted because I need to go to the word itself instead of the songs. The songs have their place. The mm -hmm. books have their place. But it's mm -hmm. nothing like the word itself. It's the bread of life. You know, mm -hmm. um, Psalm 1 talks about meditating on the word day and night, that I can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Mm -hmm. So, and th those songs supplement that word. Mm -hmm. Those songs will bring out what the word of God itself has done in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of months uh, ago, I've been hooked on The Chosen. I mm -hmm. um, binge watched The Chosen and I was all excited, felt revived, but then my heart got convicted. I'm, you know, that can't be my meditation. 
for my growth. It's the word itself, you know? And so um, that's when the source, when, when I am connected to the right source and that's the word, then I know I can be used. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Sources that these uh, social media, um, our news, uh, the way we communicate with one another, um, and the way communication is fed back to us. It, it's one of those things where you really have to be mindful of what you allow in your ear gate. Because there's so many times when you're uh, curious and interested in what's going on in the world, and that is the influence, as opposed to the word of God being the influence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rather than seeking out those outside sources, and, and it's good to have news, don't get me wrong, it's good to be able to hear what's going on in the world. But I think with the word of God being that basis for us, being our foundation, that we continue to study, we continue to show ourselves yeah. so that mm -hmm. when these other things come in, we're we're judging it based on what the word of God has said. We're, oh, yeah. we're convicted by um, what the word has said about these things. Um, and 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 also purposing not to love the world nor the things mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a tug of war with us. That's a tug of war. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. well, you know, as we go further than that, you know, we begin to see where. Uh, we talk, but the scripture begins to talk about this man who has this measuring line, okay? There's the measuring line, um, and he's measuring the depth of the river. Uh, we see that, um, let's see, around verse 4, well, actually verse 3. He says, when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, brought me through the waters, and the water came up to the ankle. The whole issue of walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and but also later on we talked about that whole issue of, of of just going ankle deep in the Lord. And unfortunately, a lot of people are satisfied to just be ankle deep in the Lord. In other words, it's it's almost like it's almost like being uh on the peripheral. You know what I mean? I don't I'm in, but I don't want to be too close. You know, that way. If I if I could hide on the peripheral, nobody's gonna ask me to do a whole lot. That's when the it, Lord right has right expectations, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. Right there. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm so I'm satisfied being ankle deep in the Lord. Um, I'm kind of in. I know I'm in, but I don't want to go any further than just be saved. Um, but but I mean, can you if, if if can you really be comfortable there as a believer? I think people say they are. But there's no way you can be comfortable just being ankle deep in the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. got to be a pulling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, let's just bring it home to Genesis. Could you really be comfortable being ankle deep in the Lord with what we get and with all we have got? Anybody, just think about that. Just share, just, just think about it. Any comments about that? Can you really be comfortable? Yeah. Unmute yourselves, y'all. You can unmute yourselves. Yeah, unmute and talk. <laughs> this is an example, kind of like of what you're just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Got cameras yeah. off. Come on, turn the cameras on. Come on, so we can see. <laughs> but that's the oh, goal. Yeah. That is the goal. I want to see my hair. <laughs> 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 but that's the call. He calls us to go deeper than mm -hmm. I go deeper. Well, um, the, who's gonna say something? Yeah, let me speak as someone who wanted to be an ankle deeper. Okay. Uh, you know, when I first got saved, uh, 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 my my old church and <laughs> pastor walks up to me one day and he says, "God has some things He wants you to do." And I looked at him and kind of laughed. And I said, "Let me tell you, man." I said, my wife prayed, you know, I, I, I came, I got saved, I, you know, I come 11 to 1. Okay, after that, it's, you know, NFL on CBS, you know, I, I'm cool. 
<laughs> and I never will forget, he, he looked up at me and laughed and turned around and walked away. <clears throat> and um, I'm, I'm cool, I'm cool ankle deep, okay? Um, but it didn't work out that way because things just kept coming. Things that I didn't see because I didn't want to. Uh, even when I came to Genesis, I, I was concerned just to be on the Good Samaritan. Let me hold a bag. Uh, let me be on security, you know. Uh, let me just chill out. You know, I'll come in, I'll do my little do, and <laughs> let me just leave. And as you can see, it didn't work that way. But what I, what I found is that that's the way the enemy tries to check you. Mm. Because, uh, again, at, at where I'm at now, uh, I am totally content in what I'm doing for the Lord right now. Uh, I get, as you know, I get excited when I teach. You know, even Camille says, Camille says, I wonder who, who is that up there making all that noise uh, <laughs> when, when they're teaching. And, and I try to tell my, my children and my grandchildren, like, if you want to know true joy, then place yourself in the center of God's will. And, but, but the enemy works the other way. Uh, you know, people say, you know, I sacrifice my time. Well, your time is not yours. Once you come to Christ, you don't have no time. The time is his. He's giving you time. You know, you're not giving him something that's not even yours in the first place. You have people say, well, you know, I don't think I have time for that. I mean, but if your job calls and says, uh, I want you to work, you know, 10 hours over this week, everybody goes, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm in on that. God calls and it's like, uh, I don't have time. Let me pray about it. Uh, let me think about it. You know, let me talk to, you know, Joe Blow and see what he says. And the list goes on and on. And, you know, we have the 80-20, 80-20 scenario, right? 80% mm -hmm. of the work in the church done by 20% of the people. Right. And, 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 why, and why is that? I mean, you know. But anyway, so, you know, speaking as one of those ankle deeper, knee deepers, uh, hip deepers, and I'm, I'm getting up to the overflow, you know, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm, I'm moving, you know, <laughs> I'm up to that third level uh, in, 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 you know, in, in the water now, so, um, and, 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 and it's good, you know, I'm, I'm like, hey, you know, joy, I'm understanding joy, the world has, has nothing for me now, and I think sometimes you just have to grow to that stage, yes. where you realize <laughs> the world yeah. has nothing for you. There's nothing in the world that will last or bring you true joy as when you are doing what God has gifted you to do. You talk about using your gifts. Mm -hmm. That's when you got yeah. it. When, you, when yeah. you're using your gifts and, and the Lord is using you and you're blessing people and you're doing stuff, man, that's, I tell you, that's it. If you ain't got that, you better get on, you better ask, go back and say, what's my gift? and get mm -hmm. on board, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, some of y'all know when you're sharing the gospel with people and you see people accept Christ, you get that, yeah, you get that joy, like, mm, you know? Uh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, that, yeah. that's it. But I'm, I'm just speaking as a formal ankle deeper, okay? Speaking <laughs> <laughs> well. Deacon, Deacon Cliff, uh, I think back on, you know, after new members class, after we, you know, made our, came across the stage and walked across and did our thingy, and then it was time to join ministry. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Pastor gave everyone the, we've all had the spiritual gifts exam. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it comes time for you to make that decision. I remember wanting to hit the ground running in the nursery. I just knew I had to be there. That's where I had to be. That's where I had to start off. Let me just start off there because I've wanted just to be able to operate, to do something, to do something. And it, it was an area of giftedness of wanting to just love on and care for not just my child, but other children that were there. Oh my goodness. So mm -hmm. I know the rest of us here that are on this Zoom call have had that that urgency of wanting to do something for the Lord, wanting to participate mm -hmm. in some way to use the gifts that God has given us for the betterment of the body. And maybe we didn't even think about it being that 
back then. Maybe it was mm-hmm. just something that was in your heart that you knew you wanted to do. And the church had this ministry that did it, that very same thing. I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but every time I look at Charlene, I just think about, Lord, it, you know, her, her singing ability. What if she sat on the sidelines and never, never share that gift with the rest of us. Amen. I, mean, I, I, I praise God. I praise mm-hmm. God for for being able to be ministered by that gift and the gifts that all of us bring on the Zoom. Amen. Amen. But I, I think it's a realization. Uh, I think Paula said the word first, realization. I think Dick Cliff said realization. That humility part that you started off with, Minister Mosley, is a realization that we can't do it alone, that we need Christ, mm-hmm. that um, real, realization that um, it's not about us. Um, as Deacon um, Tomlin said, that um, this time is not ours. Mm-hmm. And when we come to that place of humili- uh, uh, humility, we're realizing that we, uh, that we have a purpose and that that ankle realization that we want, the more we know, we want to dig deeper. We want to get involved. And sometimes the Lord has to use his tools to get us to that place. Mm -hmm. And all the characters you guys name biblically, as well as ourselves, some of us need um, sharper tools than others to get it going. (laughs) And um, to to come to that place of realization and humility to do his work. Amen. What's that sharper tool, Glennie? What's that sharper tool? Say it again. What's that sharper tool? What's that sharper tool? Uh Uh-huh. Well, we all got something different. You know how uh, he can bring that out of us, you know. (laughs) And that that, that sharp tool is the the, the Bible that that, that tell us. Mm -hmm. uh, That place that we need to straighten out. and We need Mm -hmm. to look to him. Because most of the time we're looking at our circumstances, we look at ourselves, um, and it's about him. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know when Cliff was talking, Dean Cliff, he was talking about the joy. Um, You know, one of the things I had asked the Lord for was uh, at the many times that I had preached at Genesis, um, I had never had the privilege of giving the invitation and somebody actually come forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh wow! I never, I you never had, had that Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. That was Woo. my day. The Lord, yes. the Lord, the Lord answered that prayer Sunday. He wow! Said, uh, I, yeah. I said, Lord, I would just love that experience. Mm. You have to give me the privilege to preach the word and give the invitation, and then somebody mm. comes forward. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. My my heart was. You just don't know what was going on in it my heart. Beat hard. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you you don't know, um, but. It's like you can see Cliff said, that's how it is when, when the Lord allows, he does something through you. That's yeah, that's yeah. it. And that's that's how the river looks. Look, you make impact mm. in somebody else's life. That's what it looks like. Um, that's right. what it looks like. And, um, and, and, and Minister Mosley, it was yeah. a grown it was a grown man at that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody and, who had um, actually listened, weighed the word and um, come forward. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and he had tears coming out of his eyes and everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. He was, uh-huh. he was broken. He was. Yeah. Wow. He was broken. It was. I was just. That was just awesome. It really was. Um, mm. You know. Uh, but that's the whole idea. You know. When we remember when we were at John chapter seven, and we were talking about verse thirty-eight. You know, mm. he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow. No. Mm-hmm. Flow. Oh. Rivers of living water. And remember, we were talking about the whole idea of stopping a river of revival. Mm-hmm. Who is the only person who stops the flow? Me. Yeah. You. Yes. I'm it's us. The person <laughs> who yeah. stops the flow. It's us. Stop. When we That's quench us. the spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is moving and pushing, and I'm resisting. Mm-hmm. I'm stopping the flow. That's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 or. I have a spiritual gift, and the Lord's prompted me, as Dean Cliff said, and I sit on it. I'm stopping the flow. Because mm-hmm. remember, the gift is not for me. It's for somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else, right. somebody mm-hmm. else ought to be blessed by what God has given me. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, 
all that stuff, you know, we looked at, you know, the whole issue of uh, how the, how it, even in this river, the scripture says it went to depressed places and parched mm-hmm. places. Remember, we looked at that, the, the, the desert places and, mm-hmm. and, and how we many times are trying to quench our thirst by going to the wrong sources. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, think about it. We all did it. I mean, even, mm-hmm. even before we got saved and uh, you know how oh, it was. Man. Yeah. Don't, go, don't go back. Don't stay there too long. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to quench the thirst. Yeah. But it wasn't but until it. we came to Jesus and drank from the correct source. Yeah. Uh-huh. But even minister. Quenched. Yes. But even minister mostly, I thought about when you said a word without the Holy Spirit is a word without life. Mm-hmm. That impacted me in the way of. I was like, Lord, how can you have the Holy Spirit and not have life? Mm-hmm. But he said, you say when you quench and grieve the Holy Spirit, yep. when you don't yield to him, it's like not having life, even though you have the living, you, you have the only life source there is, and that's him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I don't yield to it and I quench it or I grieve it, mm-hmm. then is, and then when you say the spirit gives life, because God is the spirit of life. Amen. Amen. And that impacted me in a way I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So even as I grow and I fall and the Lord let me know, the audience of one, it should always be your priority because nobody can evaluate your intent but me. Amen. Nobody knows Amen. your motivation but me. Amen. Because sometimes when we look with the human eye, we speculate, but only God knows. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I thank him for that, because sometimes that can be discouraging to think that you're in the body, but the body's warring against itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we all have flesh issues, mm-hmm. whatever they might be, we all have them. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. Now, consider this thought. Consider this thought. We talked about the whole issue of it being when we come together for worship, when we sit under the word, it's the audience of one. Right. But let's be real about it. In the body of Christ as a whole, many times what we do is we don't see past the messenger. Right. Consider that thought now. Consider it. We got to get past the messenger and see the Lord, yeah. hear the Lord, allow the voice of the Holy Spirit to go beyond the word of God and speak like to me. It's got to be beyond the messenger, whoever it is, whoever it is. Yeah, you have to see. You know, I'm saying that, but it, it, it's, it's real. It's real. Because listen, let's be real about it. Sometimes we get so caught up in the messenger that if the messenger, whoever it is, it's not there. Folks turn around and go out the door. Mm-hmm. Well, don't come. What does that mean? That it's not the audience of one. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that thought. Ah, I ruffled some feathers. I know I did, but listen, listen, that's the truth. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's the mm-hmm. truth. The mm-hmm. audience of one. The mouthpiece, God is speaking through the mouthpiece, but it is the Lord that is speaking. Mm-hmm. Lord, show me what you're trying to show me. What is it? What is it? How do I bring life to this? How do you how do you want to bring life in my life through that word? How do you mm-hmm. want to do that? Mm-hmm. Real quiet. I know, I know, I understand. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a real thought. It really is. It's a real mm-hmm. thought. It really is. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts before we move on? Anybody? Mm-hmm. Because what God puts in us, as we talked about. Um, he, the design the design is that it is to flow through us. Mm-hmm. We are a conduit. We are a conduit. Mm-hmm. You know what that conduit is? Things flow through a conduit. They don't sit mm-hmm. there. They mm-hmm. flow through it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, because if we become stagnant, there's no growth. There's no growth mm-hmm. in me, and I don't help anybody else to grow. Yes. Put in me is not designed to just sit there. It is designed to flow, to flow. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, yes. No, just say amen. I just say amen, okay. Minister Mosley. Okay. All right. So now, then we went on and we talked about this issue of the force of the river. Why? Because 
um, and we look at Psalm one and whole idea of this of a saint being like a tree. Uh -huh. It's compared to a tree. You know, he he blessed is the man who walked down the council of the ungodly, sits in the seat of the scornful. Uh, he delights in the law of the Lord. In that law, he don't meditate day and night. Uh -huh. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It uh -huh. gives its fruit in its season. It's like if we are planted, we will become like a healthy tree. Uh -huh. Now, you think about a tree. Um, there are trees that can withstand hurricane force winds. Why? Because uh -huh. the roots are deep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when hurricanes, the trials of life come because they're planted deep. Mm -hmm. They're not blown over. That's the picture of the healthy saint. Now, um, again, there's the question. Do I want to just be ankle deep? Do I want to be waist deep, knee deep, or do I want to be covered over? Mm -hmm. What's the desire for my life? I mean, does that mean that the Holy Spirit is in total control of my life? And think about that. When the storms come, if I'm covered by the Holy Spirit, I'm not blown over by the storm. Because he got me. Oh, think about that. Minister, <laughs> Minister Mosley, but in that, and sometimes trees are bent, but mm -hmm. it's a bad product of them yielding when that storm mm -hmm. came. Uh -huh. And so the Lord saying, you didn't get uprooted, but that was a part of your shaping to conform you to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So they don't, you know, the root deep, I, I, the, the, the roots being deep is primary, but knowing whether or not you should bend. And if you don't bend, if you resist that, you could be broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's the way he showed me, you know, this trial. And I have to keep reminding myself this, like Dr. Stanley said, which is really impacting me is, this thing is from God. I don't care who I use to send it to you. This thing is from me. And it's a poem that was out that it said, the Lord said, this thing is from me. Mm -hmm. Don't look at the, the vessel that I use. This is still coming directly from me. Amen. As a part of your shaping mm -hmm. to be conformed mm -hmm. to the image of Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Those tests, Those tests that come, because like, you know they're mm -hmm. going to come. Uh -huh. come. You know they're going to come. How are you going to fare? How are you going to, what's going to anchor you? What is going to steady you? What, what is going to keep you? It, it can only be the Lord. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we want to run to other people and to find uh, comfort or solace in other people. But the Lord's like, nope, nope, nope. You find that in me. You find mm -hmm. it. Um, going to others is just spreading it. It's just spreading, mm -hmm. finding that comfort, that solace, even sometimes that chastening through the test. It's got to be with him, you and him, like you guys said earlier, the audience of one. Audience of one. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And as long as we, uh, long as we stay, I have this down here by the living water, we, we grow. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, I find that uh, as I get older and, and I read and study more and and you have a you have a thirst to know more or to want to do more. Mm -hmm. but you, you 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 realize you're never going to know it all, but it it becomes a joy in studying mm -hmm. and 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 uh, obeying God and mm -hmm. and it gives me peace, gives me a lot of peace. Amen. And Minister Mosley, that fruit, the other part of the scripture, that fruit in due season. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. that fruit yeah. in due season. What it takes to produce fruit. Yeah. And sometimes it is that testing. And mm -hmm. definitely, though, that abiding, that abiding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Due season, that's the part we always struggle with because due season mm -hmm. is God's business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It is. Due season, that that's God's business. It's It's... Yeah. Uh, he knows what he's after. He knows what it it's gonna yeah. take to get what he's after. Mm -hmm. And the season yeah. when we blossom, that's his business. That's that's his business. And what did Pastor say about being in that oven? Yeah. 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 Hey, you ain't finished cooking. You ain't finished cooking yet. <laughs> after you have suffered a while. Well, how long is a while? Yeah. I used to um, 
I, I used to tell my, my students in Romans, just look in the back of your Bible where the, all the helps is and see if you find a chart and you can tell me how many weeks, days, or months, or years are in a due season. Mm -hmm. And I said, you won't find one because nobody knows yeah. except God. Nobody what knows. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I think as we look at the differences and the differences in the, in the depth of the water, um, the person who could be saved for 20 years and never goes any further than ankle deep, sometimes you may be wondering what happened to that person. Why did they drift away? Because they were an ankle deep Christian. And when some certain trials came, they were blown over because they refused to go any deeper than ankle deep. Think about that. I mean, because now you look at where we are now. Um, and I'm, saying, I'm not saying this is true of everybody, but uh, that COVID, the COVID time did something. And I think it exposed some folk to where they <laughs> maybe really were. Um, that trial blew some people over and they haven't recovered from it. Why? Because they were shown they were really just ankle deep. Or, or they may have never gotten off the bank. Uh, which means that they maybe maybe they really didn't know the Lord. I don't know. Heaven, I don't have a heaven to put anybody, but I think that's a picture of it. They were just ankle deep in the Lord for 20 years and just ankle deep. Ankle deep. So when the trials come, they were just blown over. Mm -hmm. I think it was definitely a trial because mm -hmm. I mean everybody here can ask can ask itself when it when have you ever known a time when you could not attend church as a man? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you what, I, I think the Lord got he just got sick of what was going on. He kicked everybody out. <laughs> just get out, get out, just get out. I'm time, time, all y'all, just get out. Now, Minister Mosley, yeah. do you uh -huh. think some of that was God's pruning, pruning yeah. away others who just, you know, hey, you a dead branch, you're not producing any fruit. Let me just prune mm -hmm. so this this body can grow fuller and fuller, deep. Mm -hmm. Might have been. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the scripture says the scripture says that judgment begins in the house of God. That word judgment means pruning. That's what it means. It means yeah. pruning. And I believe that's part of what we saw. God pruned some folk. He said, you know what? You've been playing around with this thing long enough. Okay. You really, I think that's what we saw. I, I really believe that's what we saw. So. But Minister Mosley, I, I think not only was it just in uh, collectively, it was individually. Because I'm like, if I had to have cancer, Lord, why couldn't it have been another time? He'd be like, I'm the Lord, not you. <laughs> I'm like, it, 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 I mean, it was a double whammy. You know, mm -hmm. like you say, was, I think stuff happened to people that you never could imagine that would be happening. I mean, especially with that type of crisis and it's still thinking this third year, we're still dealing with something nobody's talking about because people ain't dropping like ants. You know, but it's still going on, but it's almost like I'm still giving you an opportunity to get it right. Yeah, amen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Amen. Now, you know, we were talking, we also talked about, uh, we used the comparison of the day of Pentecost, you know, in Acts chapter two, and we talked about that. And we, we looked at the fact that um, on that day, there was only about 120 disciples. And it was supposedly around 1 million um, people in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. And that 120 people, because they caught on fire for the Lord, they impacted 1 million people. The scripture says many came to know Jesus because of that. Mm -hmm. um, now, the thought there is that, a thought that I shared was the unsaved are going to come when they see the reality of Jesus lived out in us. Mm -hmm. The reality of the Lord Jesus lived out in us. Um, now, the call is to not just talk about it, but to live it. Very simple statement, but that's the call. Um, to live out who we say we know. Our lifestyles ought to point people to Jesus. We ought to be light um, to draw people to Jesus. In other words, my life should be a testimony. My neighborhood 
My life should be a testimony. My neighbors should, they shouldn't have to guess whether I'm a Christian. They should know. They should know. Because that's just start right there in our neighborhoods, in our household, where we ought to be making impact. Um, because again, as we talked about before, the river flowed toward the east. It was heated because it was pointed towards the sun, because the sun rises in the east. And if we, have, if we are pointed the correct direction, then our lives will be heated by the S-O-N, by the S-O-N, and people will receive the warmth of Jesus from us. He'll receive it from us, because that's the call. We realize that. That is the call today, right? That is the call. So, um, now what did we see there? You know, we saw a lot of stuff that happened in this text, you know. Um, in verse 8, we saw a healing that happened, you know. Uh, when the river flowed to the Dead Sea, we began to see um, mm -hmm. life restored. You know, what was now was no longer fish there. There was now fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what does that show? It shows that the Holy Spirit has power to heal everything that, in the humanity that needs healing. But who is he going to use? Who is he going to use? Us. Mm -hmm. That what he has put in us needs to flow out of us mm -hmm. into society. But it needs to start in our sanctuaries, as we talked about. When we come together, is the idea is I'm open to what God has to say. I'm open to the Holy Spirit's work in my life. It has to start in the sanctuary so it can flow out of the sanctuary. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Well, I know it works. Because I was in, in the market one time, and I just got to talking to these um, two um, ladies. And uh, they were my age, maybe just a little old. And um, then uh, they were like, oh, we go to this church. And said, what church do you go to? I said, uh, I go to Genesis Bible Fellowship Church. They said, oh, that's the church where the people know the Bible. <laughs> that, that made me feel pretty good. <laughs> you know, for these strangers that had heard of Genesis. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, we know the we know the Bible. Well, they, they, I heard a story once of a pastor who said that too. He said somebody said something about Genesis, and they said, "Oh, they don't play over there. They don't play." This a pastor saying. I said, "Wait a minute, why aren't you saying that about your church?" Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that well, a real must, thought? They must wow. be playing over there where he is, they, right? They playing over there. They said, they "Oh, don't. There. They don't play over there. Oh, you go there. They don't play over there." I thought. Why aren't you saying that about your church? Mm -hmm. That's like the statement that you made when they said when somebody went to church and they said a sermon was boring, mm -hmm. but that had more to do with the person's soil, the type of soil, you know, even sometimes with our families or neighbors and stuff, is the type of soil that we're dealing with, you know. Mm -hmm. When you try, you know, because some of them say, oh, that you ain't got to do all that. All that ain't necessary to be no Christian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, even, yeah. you know, okay. even sometimes among our own, we, oh, all that ain't necessary. Yeah. Can you stop? Yeah. Everything got to be God and Jesus. <laughs> everything, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You, you, know, uh, you know, you, you talk about that. Oh. Somebody going to say something. I'm sorry. No, good, bro. I think that was Marvin's. Uh, no, what I was gonna say, yeah, I'm, I thought I had it on mute. Let me mute y'all until I'm ready to say something. Okay. Right. I know you, okay. No, Sister Darling, she was talking about, you know, the, the, the boring sermon thing. I, I remember in, I was in a workshop and and uh, and I might share this with you too, Minister Mosley. It, it, and the, and uh, the guy was saying that mm -hmm. a friend of his called him up and he had just taken over the pastor of a new church. And he called him up and he said, uh, Doc, I don't know what's going on. He said, you know, I study, I have, ex you know, I got all my, my notes and everything. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, going down line by line, precept by precept. And I'm looking out there and I get a bunch of blank faces. And he said, I don't know what's going on. And so uh, he said, well, I'll tell you what you do. He said, next week, after you finish your sermon, close your Bible and walk from behind the pulpit. And just tell me what happens, you know? And, you know, he said, when you walk around, just say a few, you know, a few little, little lines uh, to encourage your people and tell me what happened. And he said, the next week he called him back. He said, well, you know, as soon as I close my Bible and walk from around the pulpit, the whole uh, 
sanctuary just said, oh, come on, Rev, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm waiting for the show. Mm -hmm. The entertainment. The waiting entertainment. The, they have been used to the who. That was mm -hmm. the days yeah. you hear him. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Right on time. He's an on time job. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. never late. You know those cliches and, and those things that and, and people get pumped up off of that <laughs> and forget about the substance yeah. of the word. Yeah. 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 I, I looked at my feet, they look new. Yeah, looked right. at my hands <laughs> and they did too. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody's just jumping and hollering. Yeah. And, you know, That's called know. an amusement church. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. but the sad part in all of that is if you're going through something. That's like a dagger to your heart because while yeah. they're doing yeah. all of that, you know, the person sitting there and feeling like, whoa, but but nothing, nothing is feeding me. And I'm still in the same situation that I was when I walked in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. But that's where we are. We have a as we talked about, we have a theater mentality mm -hmm. when we come to church. We want to come mm -hmm. in, kick back, and be amused. You know, feed mm -hmm. me, pump me, make me feel good, and let me go home. Mm -hmm. and let me go home. Yeah. You know, but unfortunately, that's where we are. And um, mm -hmm. you know, and, that's where we are. And you know, yeah. some churches don't even want that. They just want the music, right? Where, where we came from. That's all they wanted was the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Minister Mosley, when you were talking about John chapter 7, mm -hmm. whew, I was starting to shake inside mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I had I had a Jewish person had talked about that Feast of Tabernacles and mm -hmm. the seventh day mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that water drawn ceremony. Mm -hmm. and, and you were talking about people being there and missing Jesus. Yeah. Miss Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then you know, and the thing was, the Jewish guy was saying that they sung Isaiah chapter 12. And I was like, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And Isaiah chapter 12, it, 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 and it even goes over to say that, I mean, people are so excited about it. Mm -hmm. And that day you will say, oh, Lord, I will praise you, though mm -hmm. you were angry with me. Your anger is turned away. Mm -hmm. Behold. God is my salvation. And I'm like, mm. and Jesus standing right there. They, they're yeah. they're yeah. excited about all of that. And it said, verse three, therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells mm. of salvation. Mm -hmm. And Jesus standing there and saying, he's the, you know, basically saying, I'm the water of life. And then right. basically they're shouting and carrying on about something that's, and Jesus is standing right there. Standing mm. right there. And they missed it. They and they missed, missed it. it. And they missed it. And they missed, missed it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, but the other thing what, we talked about. Questions, darling. Go ahead. But that's what you're saying is happening today when God's men who are presenting God's word, the unadulterated, I'm talking about God's men, the ones that he called, not the ones that called themselves. <laughs> and people are still, we still missing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has to be with us. It can't just be with the presenter. We have to have some accountability for ourselves. Yeah. Are we getting in the word ourselves? And then what God sends the preacher to pass on to the people to prepare them to go out. Mm -hmm. But what impacted me was that uh, the other one when you said in the Old Testament, God had a temple for his people to go into. Mm -hmm. Something like he was saying, the Jews. Mm -hmm. But in the New Testament, God lives in his people. God's people, we are the temple. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I was like, that is just so powerful. We don't have, we, we ain't got to send nobody, no priest. Our priest is Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He's already, mm -hmm. the lamb mm -hmm. of God is already. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we 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 starting to get a little excited, getting a little. Heat. I, I, you can't help it. That word is alive, girl. It just does. Yeah, getting a little heated. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. But you know, as we kind of come to the end of the day, uh, one of the other things we talked about was restoration. We need mm -hmm. restoration. Mm -hmm. We need, but you know where it starts? In me. Yes. Mm -hmm. It starts mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. Lord, listen, 
we, when we talked about the three groups of people, you know, mm -hmm. those who make things happen, those who <laughs> kind of watch, and then there's the others who don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to be the folk who purpose to make things happen. And mm -hmm. just see where it starts in me. Lord, you start in me. Make me the vessel that starts the revival, that there's restoration, that, that so that, that that life, that water can flow through the sanctuary and out. That's the call. That's the call. It's it's it's, it's a call for each one of us to, to be yes. in that place. Yes. Not just seek to get another word, but that, that there be life in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Any other comments? And we'll mm -hmm. we'll close and we'll we'll uh, take some prayer requests. But any other comments? Mm -hmm. I, no. I, I just like 40, that verse 47, 12. Mm, yeah. It just summarizes everything. When you look at that verse, that's power. Yeah, absolutely. That is Absolutely. Power. Yeah, there'll be abundance. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's around verse five. He says, he also, he says, exceedingly abundant. Oh, I said, do you see that? Exceedingly yep. abundant. Yes. God will restore in that way. Oh, but we got to be in a place to be the vessel that God can use to start mm -hmm. that restoration. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Anything else? Anything else? Yeah. And yeah, Miss Minister Mosley, I have something to, to yeah, say. Go ahead. Okay. You mentioned that the, the river flows east. Uh huh. And uh, that's where the sun rises. Mm -hmm. um, that's the literal sun, S U N. Yes. But you, you also said that. Um, the East is, you know, our focus should be on Jesus. And the passage that came to me, and I thought I'd share that, is looking onto Jesus, the author mm -hmm. and finisher mm -hmm. of our faith. Mm -hmm. So as we go East with all its ups and downs, mm -hmm. if our focus on Jesus, yeah, you know, he mm -hmm. will, he's the author and he's also the mm -hmm. finisher of our faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah, Praise God. Mostly, yes. mostly, um, the Holy Spirit himself is compared to a river because of how he moves. Um, he's the shape for all the world today. You know, because all that is happening now, you know, we just have to continue to lean on the Lord, you know, because mm -hmm. he is the river. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Are we good? Well, yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. We close out. Then we'll have to take some prayer requests. Father, thank you today for our time together. Thank you for this opportunity you've given us to, again, reflect on your word. And thank you for uh, your desire uh, to use us to be a part of what you're doing. Help us, Lord, to be open. Help us uh, to not quench the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we might yes. make an impact, Lord. I, I use that word a lot, but it's so important that you, what you've given us, Lord, is not for us, but it is to 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 uh, someone else might be uh, watered by the water you've put in us. So bless, Father. Water Genesis, Lord. Water Genesis once again, that there'll be life, that there'll be a revival, there'll be restoration. Uh, we see people drawn back. We'll see souls soul saved. Yes. Just thank you, Lord. You're going to do. We honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's pray. We'll get started this evening. Talk a little bit. Let's pray. Father, thank you this evening for the privilege to come before you. We again are just grateful for just being a part of what you're doing. Lord, we do bless you tonight. And we thank you for just being who you are. You're a great God and greatly to be praised. And we thank you for your word. Father, we pray that you'll bless our time this evening as we just, just discuss what you, you allow to be shared. Pray, Father, that you would just stir up hearts, uh, that we might see things from your perspective. And uh, may you just do a work that only you can do tonight in the midst of your people. So we honor you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, as you know, this past Sunday, you know, we had this privilege to stand and uh, come from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. 
um, we were talking about this, uh, gave it the title, and it was really a request, you know, Lord, please water us. I mean, because the, the church is really in uh, a dry season. It's a dry season for the corporate church, for the corporate body. Um, and so let me read some verses. Let me read the first five, five, six verses to you as we begin to talk. Uh, the scripture says, and he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. And he brought me out by way of the north gate, and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. And he brought me through the waters. And the waters came up to my ankle. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000. And it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which no one would, which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. Let me read a few more verses. Then when I returned there along the bank of the river, were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves where, wherever the rivers go will live. There will be a great, very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. So they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. And it shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi to En Ingham. They will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many, but its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. And along the bank of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Amen. Amen. Um, so as we begin to talk about this tonight, you know, we, you know, we talked about this whole issue of, as I said, the desire for God to water us. Um, you know, the idea of when we gather for corporate worship is that uh, we ought to be seeking the presence of God in our midst, um, and, but I think what is happening is um, that we, we have forgotten uh, as the body of Christ that when we gather um, that the Lord is the audience. I'm not the audience, I don't come for me, I come to seek the presence of God. It is in the presence of God where we experience the healing, we experience uh, a freshness, We we will experience his presence. Um, but I think what happens is, as we kind of talked about, we talked about this issue of entertainment. You know, uh, what has happened now is many places have set up, uh, as I say, church to be entertainment. The atmosphere is, is an atmosphere of entertainment. I mean, the light shows, the smoke shows, the all of that stuff and all it has done is it has made the church look like it's a place for amusement. You know, we talked about that issue of amusement. Amusement means that, you know, I just come, I'm not really focused, I'm not, I'm not really thinking, I just come and you pump me for whatever and you make me feel good and you let me go home. And that's why I think that the church has lost its impact. It has lost, uh, many believers are walking around as it were powerless because we are not experiencing the presence of God. And it is so needed. Uh, you know, now, let me ask you a question. Based on what we talked about, um, 
I know I talk about it, but how do you see prayer? Well, how do you see worship? How do you see worship in an assembly? What do you think it should look like? What should it look like? Anybody, unmute yourself. Everybody unmute yourself. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk. Unmute yourself. Worship. What should it look like? You know, we I know we have our ideas, but what should it really look like? What should it look like? Anybody? Well, hello everybody. Hello. I um when I go to church and I go to worship, I go there to fight to just give praise and honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and just to thank God for who he is, what he is, what he's done for me, family, my friends, my church. Sister yeah. Linda, you're going in and out. Can you repeat some of that? Because you went in and out. No, you know I can't remember that. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> I say, no, I just mess with you. I say, when I go to, can you hear me now? Yes. I said, when I go to church, when I come to church, I, well, first of all, I pray before I get there. I pray on my way there. I don't get out of the car unless I pray. And uh, I go there with the mindset to see Jesus and to, to put Jesus and to just to worship him and to thank God and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for who he is and what he is, what he's done for me, what he will do for me, and what he's doing in my life. And just to, just to thank him because looking back from where I came from and where he brought me from and how that I don't even deserve to call his name, to be in his presence, I go there just to, just to see him and I just... And sometimes it'd be so overwhelming that I just cry. And I I went to the Bible, uh, the Bible convention, and the man was up there. And he said, he said, I go to a many churches, he said, but in this church, if you look on the on the, these stained glasses, you see Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what he said, talking about Genesis. And I thought about that. I just go there just to just honor him because God is. God is awesome. I, I words can't even I can't even describe how how much he means to me because I look back where I came from and who he is and how awesome he is and how loving and kind and gentle he is. And that's why I go there. Uh, that's what I look at worship, you know. Um not to not to be looking for nothing, but just to, to give him me. This is the only time that I have peace. And this is the only time that I can really just concentrate i mean and when i'm in church i don't think about nothing but him that's the, i mean it seemed like when i walk in that door and see the saints of god and, and that see that worship and then start worshiping the lord i don't even think about nothing nothing and don't want to think about nothing <laughs> amen amen anybody else anybody else what does it look like <laughs> What was, the question? What, what was the question again, Deacon Mosey? I mean, Minister Mosey? No, I said, when I was saying, I was saying, what does worship look like? What should it look like when we gather together? What, what should worship look like? What should it look like? It should look like God's children praising and worshiping and giving him all the glory that's due to his holy name. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. that's what it should look like, that we both kind of like bouncing off of one another and praising God and giving him the glory mm -hmm. for what he's done for us in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? I think it I should think. be that we all want a court and we come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. one accord focusing on on God mm -hmm. and just giving him praise and honor and glory. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Anybody else? Any, any other ideas? Any thoughts? Um, my thoughts, uh, Sandra. Um, when I think of worship, I'm thinking worship should show love, and it should it should show us um, acceptance. When you come to a church, you should feel that love. 
Hmm. Yes, you should. Okay. Okay. Well, let's consider for a moment that when we come together, mm -hmm. uh, I think some people already said it, but the idea is that we have to take ourselves out of the equation. Mm -hmm. It has to be the focal point. He is the audience. He is the audience of one. It is the audience of one. Do yeah. we realize? Do we realize? And I know I've said this a lot, but do we mm -hmm. realize? what the Lord could do in our midst. Mm. If we could get everybody who enters that place mm. to have one focus, the Lord is the focal point of why we have gathered. That's the idea. Um, and, and if we could do that, I mean, let's just take, for instance, I'm getting ahead of myself, but when you look at what happened um, on the day of Pentecost, the scripture says they were all in the upper room they had one mind, they had one focus. And then what and then what happened? What happened in that room? All of them were empowered to go out and make impact. 120 people impacted 1 million people. Because it all started with the audience, everybody having the audience of what? They were they were looking to the Lord, waiting for the promise of what he said. Amen. And then what happened through that? Amen. He first worked through them, and then they were able to go out and make impact in society. Yes. yes. And that, that's the call. See, so we talk about the Lord watering us. Mm -hmm. That's how God will begin to do a work mm -hmm. in each of us individually. Um, when we make him the focal point when we gather. Not just when we gather, but he's the focal point in my life. Mm -hmm. He's the focal point in my life. Yes. yes. Um, you know, let's be real about it. Um, there's so, there are so many distractions now that the Lord is probably one amongst a many. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we got to fight hard to really make the Lord the centrality of focus in our lives. Mm -hmm. We got to work hard. Yeah. But, but what, we need, what we need now is we, we don't need to just continue to just do church. We just come and do church and go home. No there has to be a shift in how we think about a worship service. Because, and I, I'm, my thoughts are all over the place. I'm about to get way ahead of myself in, in yeah. talking about this, but but, but really, we've got to get to the point where it's not just about just coming together, mm -hmm. go through, and we get a word, and we go home, and there's no shift, there's no change in our lives. God is after changing our lives. Yes. He's after changing our lives. So so anyway, let me get to this because I'm gonna see, I'm gonna get ahead of myself because my thoughts are all over the place. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All over the place. But but listen. So, go ahead. Was somebody gonna say something? Yeah. So I was gonna um say it is intimacy with Jesus when we're all in one accord with the intimacy mm -hmm. with Jesus. Uh -huh. Because, um, you know, we are faced with so many pressures in life that we drift away from the intimacy with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, one of the things that we have to, one of the ways that we can begin to really see God move, if we could get people past the idea of being a spectator. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being a spectator, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, uh, I go to the movies, I sit and I watch the movie and I'm a spectator. So we bring that mentality to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a spectator. I'm a spectator. Um, you know, I'm gonna sit and watch the performance. It's like, entertain me, make me feel good. Let me go home. Yeah. Now, now if you recall, I talked about three, three groups of people, right? There are three kinds of people when we come together. The first group is the people, those are the people who they make things happen, okay? You have a group who makes things happen, right? You know, they are the people who who say, okay, Lord, we need a revival and send it through me. See, the question is, but see, I gotta be, I gotta be that open that I'm that I want the Lord to work through me. That means I'm open. I'm open, Lord. Whatever you want to do through me, yeah. do it. Okay, but then the second group is the people who watch things happen. Those are the, those are really the spectators. Um <laughs> But they watch. They're, they're the Sunday morning spectators, right? Mm -hmm. It's like now the idea is that sometimes they may even walk in and feel like they did the Lord a favor because I showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is that I come 
with the with the mentality that Lord, whatever needs to happen, you work it through mm -hmm. me, so I go out the doors and I'm ready to serve. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to serve. That's the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then you have the other folks who just show up. They don't even know what's happening. They came because somebody invited them. They come and they sit. They didn't. They just go. Okay. Or they come out of habit, but they really don't understand what's going on. But you see, what is happening? You know, we read John chapter seven, verse uh, verse thirty seven and thirty eight. And the whole idea of uh, what the Lord has poured into us, right. he wants it to flow out into society. Mm -hmm. There has to be a flow from our lives. There has to be a flow. There has to be a flow. Now, here's the question. Here's the question. How does the flow happen? I'm throwing that out to you. How does the flow happen for my life? How does it happen? I'm laughing because I'm looking at Sister Cheryl. <laughs> One of her books. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, okay. Amen. Yeah, been a drill. Just, just thinking about um, uh, empty to be filled, filled to be emptied. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that flow that he pours into us, and we um, essentially will take what he has poured into us, mm. pour into others. Mm -hmm. A generous soul shall be made rich, and he who waters will himself be watered. I think that is one of those awesome scriptures that I, I didn't know about until Sister Cheryl mentioned it. Like, whoa! And, mm -hmm. and, and then to read it and then to understand that yes. that's exactly how it works. When the word, and you spoke about it earlier, you know, what does praise look like? What does worship look like? And sometimes I think it looks like us coming with this expectation. Right. We're coming emptied. And we're right. coming with the expectation to be filled right. with whatever the Lord has for me on this day. Right. Uh, I'm earnestly looking for, Lord, what do you have to give me? What do mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. pour mm -hmm. into me that I'm going to eventually pour out of and yeah. Lord will and use someplace else? Mm -hmm. Pouring in, what does it look like? A mm -hmm. yielding vessel. Yeah. Amen. Wants, Amen. wants to receive. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. But I think that uh, no, go on. Say something. I was just going to say there's no way when Faith talks says something about intimacy, there's no way that as we continue to be nurtured and grow in our intimacy with him, mm -hmm. that we can keep him contained. Mm -hmm. He can't stay contained in me because mm -hmm. his purpose is to make him. He wants me to know him, to make him known. Yes. Yeah. So the, the the usefulness and the uniqueness of each of us, mm -hmm. wherever he has assigned us, that's what is so awesome about, about right. God, because he didn't make a clone. He made us mm -hmm. all different and unique. And so right. when we do come in the body, everybody, you know, if you see the value of who you are, who you're becoming, you see what I add, mm -hmm. you know, to the body that you know nobody else may be adding but th that's me that's what i offer from my mm -hmm. personality from from what he's poured into me mm -hmm. you, you won't pour out what's not poured in okay. yeah. yes this is true we got a, a big event coming up the 20th at preakness oh yeah i know yeah y'all will be there that's good yeah yeah we're gonna give, yeah. give out the tracks that's the first that's the start of the gold ministry yeah <laughs> praise the lord yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that a yeah. shameless plug? Was that a shameless plug? <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with your other Robert. Hey, 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 Sister Paula. Hey, Sister Paula. I love you too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think part of, I think part of worship that we sometimes miss is that um, there should be, as I talked about, there should be an encounter with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea is that um, that that the, the Lord meets me where I am, mm -hmm. and out of that time, I should be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm just saying that again, off of the thought that mm -hmm. it can't just be another word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should come mm -hmm. away from that different. Wanting I should be better. I should be better somehow. Amen. And not just get the word, close the book, close the Bible, close the notes and leave. And still the same. The idea Amen. is that God wants to work a change in each of our lives. Yeah. That's the purpose of worship. When we come together corporately, 
we mm -hmm. focus on him and then the mm -hmm. Lord meets us, everybody right where they are. Yeah. That's awesome. But that's how awesome he is. He's a personal yeah. God. Yes. Amen. He's a personal Amen. God. Mm -hmm. But okay. but that's how it's supposed to look. Um because listen, as I said before, and I kind of shared this Sunday, the reason why the, the culture is drying up is because there's no water flowing in our sanctuaries out into the world. I was getting ready to say that. Yeah, mm -hmm. say it again, Dave. Go ahead. Ready. <laughs> getting ready to say that. When you look at all it, when you look at the news and everything, and they talking about um how things are gonna get. Mm things are getting so terrible mm -hmm. and i sit back and i look and i said you know what that's that's when the church needs to go out mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. into the world and preach the gospel Amen. no chasers mm -hmm. like like pm smith said no chasers <laughs> but yeah. you know and this is so you know i think about that song People need the Lord. Mm. And um the other other song that's just out by Yoki, that that Daniel Yoki, um about who's singing. Mm. <laughs> anyway, but that's just what I was I was getting ready to say. Amen. I'm so tired, y'all. I'm so sorry. I, I am so tired. Okay. But anyway, I wanted to get on because I missed noonday. But um Sister Debbie, it's Danny Goki. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about we need Jesus? Yeah, everybody needs Jesus. Oh, well, need Jesus. And, and we know, I mean, you just like the uh, lady in, in, in my mother's room, by the way, my mother's coming home Friday, but in her room is a lady, she's a Buddhist, and she gave me one of her cards yesterday <laughs> with, that, with that chant on it. But I tore it up and put it in the trash. Mm. But um, she she's been a Buddhist for thirty years. Mm. I shared the gospel with her. So did so did uh, Darling Ford. So uh, you know, and it's just we just need to go out there and 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 give it out. Mm -hmm. Give it out. Maybe. But maybe. let me but let me ask you this then. You know when you, when I guess. If we see the church as the building, mm. then that's um. as far as it's going to go. We have to remember we're the ecclesia, the right. called out ones. Right. That means wherever we go, wherever mm. we are, that's the uniqueness of who I am as God's vessel. Yes. Because each one of us are, has a sphere that we're going to touch that the other can, is not assigned to touch mm -hmm. because that's the sphere. Mm. So if our, if our intimacy Mm. And our worship mm. starts in our private, yes. personal, one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. is no way that what we do personally with the Lord is not going to flow overflow when we come together one with another. Mm -hmm. it, there's just no way. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. either holding back or we're not do we are not having that intimacy with Him. So yeah, church is just what it is—the building we come mm -hmm. to. Instead of the building that we are. Amen, mm -hmm. amen, amen, amen. But now, as we begin to talk about this, you know, kind of talk about the issue. You know, the first point I had was uh, we talked about the supernatural source of the river. Okay, mm -hmm. first yeah. part. Mm -hmm. Talked about that, and the whole idea, the picture that's given there, um, is where the river comes from. It comes from under the threshold of the temple. Okay, mm -hmm. and the whole idea of that picture there is going low. That's right. as low as you can go when you go under the threshold of the temple. Mm -hmm. And look at the fact that the river has a humble source, humble source. Mm -hmm. And the question today is that, or, or the thought today is that the body of Christ will never see revival uh, amongst God, by God's people, unless there is a humbling first. Mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to, there's a humbling first. Yes. It has to be a humbling. Now, I raised the question. I'll raise it again. How many of us have had the experience of laying out before the Lord, prostrate, prostrate on the floor, out before the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's as low as you can go. Mm -hmm. as low as mm -hmm. that, that's as low as you can go. But see, that's mm -hmm. where God begins to use his people. When we are, we purpose 
to humble ourselves before him. Mm-hmm. That's what he said after first. I mean, you know, James, James 4, 10, listen, humble yourselves in the mind of, in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. The way up is down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to be exalted. The way mm-hmm. up is down. Mm-hmm. The way up is down. Right. Now, here's a question. Do you need the presence of the Lord in your life? <laughs> Do that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can we can yes, quickly no say way. yes, but listen, listen, mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. it. Do do we really act like we need the presence of the Lord in our lives? No, not all the time. I said, do we act like we need the presence of the Lord in our lives? No, not all the time. Not all the time. Mm-hmm. No, not all the time. In those clutch moments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we really need the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Listen. Tell you what, I don't like going before him because when I go before him, a lot of error in a in a lot of ways, I make I make big mistakes. Mm. And that's why I like I, that's why I I, I I want him just to go with go before me and go with me and and I try to be conscious of, of, of asking of, of praying and asking the, 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 the Lord to um. Try to pray before I do things yeah. first. That's mm-hmm. so I don't. Mm-hmm. I try very hard to do that. Sometimes I forget though, but uh, 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 a lot of times I I pray try to pray before I go, especially when you go to work. And mm-hmm. it's just way got to make big decisions. Yeah, I don't know. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, anybody else? Anybody else? This whole issue of humility before the Lord mm. and lying out, be, laying out before the Lord. What? I mean, listen. Some of the greatest times of, of, of fellowship mm-hmm. are when I humble myself before Him. Mm-hmm. See, we sometimes we come before the Lord and we come before Him kind of pious. You know what I'm saying? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we're unbroken. Mm-hmm. You know, we we, we come before Him. Kind of prideful, um, uh, you know, like we can dictate to the Lord what He ought to do. No, the mm. idea is, excuse me, I humble myself in His presence, realizing who He is, realizing who He is. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, um, we talked about the issue of being a humble source, but also is the we we are called to be a holy source. The river had a holy source. Okay. Because when you look at where the river flowed, mm-hmm. it flowed past the altar. Yeah. It flowed past the altar. Um, now, if I really want to become a blessing, you know, I've got to become holy and I've got to become, I've got to become humble and I've got to become holy. Now, now, um, boy, I lost my thought. I was going to say something. I hate what happened. <laughs> no, I hate that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you what does that mean? When it happens, what does that mean? The you get older. You're maturing. Thank you're you, getting older. Good yeah. work. Good work. Good work. <laughs> oh. the, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to you, my brother. Hey, Amen. I mean, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to give him a minute. Trying to give him a minute. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Thank you. Okay. Heat. Heat, Amen. humble, and holy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, hey, she was listening. But anyway, um, one of the problems, you know, the scripture calls us, Romans 12, the whole idea of being a living sacrifice. Right. You know the problem with a living sacrifice, right? Mm-hmm. A living sacrifice gets on and off the altar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And that's us. That's the picture of us. We're living sacrifices. One today I'm laid out on the altar. Tomorrow I'm mm-hmm. going my own way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow I'm going, why? Because tomorrow I don't need the Lord. I got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're fighting that. So that that's part of the problem. Um but he wants us to be humble and he wants us to be holy. He wants us to be holy. Now, we all understand what holy means, right? We all understand that. Anybody, what, what does it mean? What does it mean to be holy? What does it mean? I'm throwing it out to you. What does it mean? Set apart. Separation. Separated. Mm-hmm. Separated. Mm-hmm. Separated. Separated. Set apart. That's it. Mm-hmm. Our life ought to be different. It ought to look different. It ought to look different. Mm-hmm. It ought to be different. And, and that whole issue of being set apart. Uh, it's a process, and, but it ought to be changing almost every day. We ought to be becoming better, more and more set apart. Okay. 
But also, we talked about the issue of the river having, you know, being heated because it's going the correct direction. When we talked about that, because the whole idea of the river, it was headed towards the east. And it means because the sun rises in the east, the, the heat of the river was being heated because it was going the correct direction. The idea of that is that mm -hmm. um, the picture there is that because we are heated, because mm -hmm. we are headed the right direction, and in our lives, mm -hmm. we are pointed towards the sun, the S O N. Right. Then other people ought to get some of that. Yeah. They ought to get some of that. Now, when you look at what ought to be flowing out of our lives, you know, some mm -hmm. love, some joy, some peace, some long suffering, some temperance, all mm -hmm. that stuff, but also the warmth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. are the people are yes. impacted by the warmth of Jesus because we are pointed in the right direction. That's that ought to be the flow of my life. That ought to be the flow of my life. Um, that's the call. That's the call. And then we, we began to talk about the course of the river. We talked about <clears throat> we talked about the idea of being a trickle. Amen. Because in the very beginning, the scripture says the river just flowed. It was like mm -hmm. a small flow. Mm -hmm. and then it turned into running mm -hmm. and then it became deep. Now, mm -hmm. the trickle, the idea of the trickle, as, as we talked about later on, yes. is the idea of like only having your feet ankle deep in the river. I'm not purposing to go anymore. Okay. Now, here's the question can a, can a believer, should a believer be comfortable just being a trickle? No. 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 It's a simple question. I'm just throwing it out to you to get you to no. think about it. Should a believer no. be comfortable no. being a trickle? Mm -mm. No. No. Well, no. Then the, okay, next Same question. Way. Why is that the case, though? Because God didn't call us to do that. God called us to, to pass out the word and to, to, to let the um, water flow through us mm -hmm. and let the water flow through us to someone else. That's mm -hmm. just like giving someone a drink. You know, and we giving them a drink of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and okay. so we have to let it flow mm -hmm. you know, because that's the Great Commission too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have anything to share? I had a, a thought that's not about that. In that, that seems like a passage of growth. Mm -hmm. So you're going from you start off with the trickle like a, a child, mm -hmm. and then you gradually you continually grow. The water gets to your ankle. And it gets to your knees, then it gets you know up to your waist. That's true, Julia. And if you've ever tried to walk in water, mm -hmm. the higher the water, the harder it is to move through it. Right. So there's a difficulty in there, but you're still, mm -hmm. you know, and the path of growth is right. not without problems, right? <laughs> so, right. That's exactly right. And then right. I think of Paul's words when he said, you know, desire the sincere milk of the word. Mm -hmm. He's not expecting us to continually drinking milk, but to graduate right. to more solid food. Right. So it. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm seeing the, the river. Okay. That's exactly right. Anybody else? Yeah. I think people don't want to want to stay at the uh, ankle is because it might be the fear of the unknown. Okay. And they're not mm -hmm. sure and just want to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, the river was a source of life. Life. Mm -hmm. It was a, it flowed with life and wherever it went, it, mm -hmm. it changed things. Right. Right, right. So, like, the dead things they change it to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Now, so, like, like you say, he started off with this triple, but as he go along, even ended up in the Dead Sea, where everything is dead. I've, I've been in, I was in the Dead Sea once, and he's so it's so toxic that you can't even you you can't, you can't even go underneath the water there. So that's what mm -hmm. I, they give you a little suit or something. You put it on. Try to try to keep. If you put yourself underneath it, you can't do it. You come back up to the top. But according to this, to, according to a, uh, Ezekiel, this 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 life flowing, going, yeah. it's going to bring life to a to a dead that which is dead. Yes. And you and I, we live in a dead world, and you think we don't live in a dead world? Yes. Just, just, listen, listen, to news. just listen at the news tonight about how glorious the the, the Maryland legislators have done. Uh, Look at that leadership. Oh, you, oh you my know, goodness. We live, in a dead world. we live in a dead world, my friend. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Now, the issue of um, this issue of being a trickle, um, and I use the illustration, I want to share the illustration again. Okay. 
issue of, uh, you know, if, if you're in your house and you go to turn your water on and mm -hmm. you find out you've lost water pressure. Right. And all you get out of your faucet is a trickle of water. Mm -hmm. What good is a trickle of water? You can't even fill up a glass of water with a trickle of water. You can't even wash your hands. <laughs> yeah, you can't even wash your hands. That's exactly right. Try taking a shower with a trickle of water. The, idea, the point is, the point is that purposing to be a trickle of water in my walk really means that I'm ineffective. I'm ineffective because remember, Jesus mm -hmm. said, there are rivers of water that are flow out of me. He didn't say anything about a trickle. He said rivers of water. Yes. yes. John 7, 38. Mm -hmm. there, ought be, there ought to be rivers of water mm -hmm. that flow out of me. Like you. Like yeah, you. Enjoy, Wait a minute. What were you gonna say? I said life giving. He's, he's life. Life is going to come out. That what Amen. you did come alive is going to come alive. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Is that also an equivalent of us um, lighting a candle and putting a basket over it. You mm -hmm. know, here we are. Here we have this this wonderful good work that we're doing, but yet we cover it up or we don't do it at all. Right. And then can't right. see good work. We can't glorify the Father in heaven. We, right. we just you know, with withhold that which is really meant for other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's exactly right. Right. Because that's even that's the whole idea of spiritual gifts. It's the same thing. Why God mm -hmm. gives us spiritual gifts? It's not for me. It's for everybody mm -hmm. around me. When mm -hmm. I gather, somebody mm -hmm. else ought to be blessed by what God has given me. Amen. Somebody else ought to be blessed. Even now, if even if it's one person, you know. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, when you talk, talk about the issue of a river, the only place you can stop a river is at the source. Now, in our case, who's the source? The Lord Jesus. We are. Okay, but really, we are. He's mm -hmm. pouring into us. We are the source. Mm -hmm. See, if we stop in the flow of what God wants to do, God mm -hmm. is pouring it into me, but I keep stopping the source. Yeah. I keep stopping. Yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Now, how do I do it? I want to ask you a question. How do you stop the flow? How do you do it? How do you stop the flow in your life? How do I you just, stop it? No, you I just choose stop. not to be obedient. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just choose not to obey. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, exactly that's right. The flow. And I had that free will. Mm -hmm. and, and that, to me, is one of the most awesome things that God did was when he gave man a free will to choose. Yes. Yeah. Right or not. And so... You know, to the one you yield is the one that's going to bear the fruit. Mm -hmm. Amen. To righteousness or to ungodliness. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. us. That's yeah. why we'll never be able to blame anybody for what we are not growing and what the Lord isn't doing in us because it's us. Mm -hmm. And the level of pride is what? I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our own gods. Yeah. When we want right. to yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hey, Minister, did you want to hey, say something? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I think he froze a bit. I froze. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought it was okay. You're, you're, muted. you're muted, Minister. You're muted. It wasn't me, it was my other uh, head who was talking. <laughs> when, you <lean> toward, <laughs> when you lean towards your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Amen. That's Amen. when you start growth is started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's called quenching the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is in, lives within us. Mm. He's leading, he's guiding, and I resist the, the, the leadings of the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit in my life. Yes. That's how I stop the flow. Mm -hmm. That's how That's I stop it. It's a three-letter word, brother. Three-letter word called sin. Sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Amen. Now, um, now, we talked about this whole issue of, you know, where it ought to flow, because even as we just talked about, you know, we were talking about how the world is dead. That's the whole issue of yeah. uh, the desert, because he gave the picture of the water flowing into a valley. That's the whole idea of the desert, you know, mm -hmm. and nothing lives in the desert. Everything in the <laughs> desert, there's no growth in the desert. There's no fruitfulness in the desert. And, for, and let's face it. Many of us as believers, we are living parched lives. Mm. We are we are dry ourselves. That's why we are not effective. 
outside in society. We are parched ourselves. Why? Mm -hmm. Because um, in some cases, maybe we're out of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 we we need to we need to drink from the Lord Jesus Christ. We we trying mm -hmm. to. You know, we out there trying to trying to quench the thirst other places, but we really need a drink from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's mm -hmm. part of the issue. Now, yeah, yeah, now, now, Minister, Minister Carpenter alluded to this—the whole issue of the Dead Sea. I mean, everything there was dead. Everything mm -hmm. in the Dead Sea was dead. But but when the river flowed there, mm -hmm. it brought life. Mm -hmm. It was resurrection. There mm -hmm. was revival when the river flowed. And see, that's the call on our lives. We go to those places. And when we enter the place, we ought to bring life. We ought to bring life. Yes. That's true. Amen. 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 And even at the previous brother Rod, you're going out there to bring life, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Going out there to bring life. Amen. Now, also, we talked about the issue of the force of the river. Why? Because in you know, verses 7 and 12, we saw where... Um, uh -huh. There was growth where the tree flow. I mean, where, where the tree flow, where the river flowed. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. was growth. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the whole issue there is that the trees that he's talking about is not literal trees. The trees is a picture of us. Oh, okay. Okay. If we are planted, as we talked about in Psalm 1, if we mm -hmm. are planted, there's going to be life. By the river. Mm -hmm. There's going to be life. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. now. There are different approaches to this thing as we look at it. You know, there are right. different approaches. The person who stays on the bank is a picture of a person who never got saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means they around, they are they around the Christian, but they never got saved. They refuse to even put their foot in the river. Mm -hmm. oh. They never got saved. Mm -hmm. Um, the second person is the one who just goes in ankle deep. Mm -hmm. You know, they received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, yeah, but they don't have a desire to grow any further. Mm. They don't go any further. Mm -hmm. Then you have the person who goes in needy. In other words, they begin to minister with what God has given them through the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But then you have the person who is in waist deep and they feel the flow of the river. I mean, they can feel it. But see, here's mm -hmm. the good, good, good news about that. Mm -hmm. They feel the flow, but also the river's holding them up. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? The river's holding them up. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then, see, here's the good part. This is where the Lord wants us. We enter to a point where the water is over our head. Mm -hmm. That is the idea that the Holy Spirit has totally control of my life. Mm -hmm. the, the Holy Spirit has total control of my life. That's right. Now, which call? Which do you think the Lord really wants? He wants. He wants us to yield our lives totally to Him. To him. That's the call. That is the call. Now. But see what has happened now is, you know, we 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 the, part of the problem with the church while we have dry Christians is because we have the, the word of God has been um, compromised. Yeah, make everybody feel good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the church wasn't designed for um, the, un, the you know for unsaved people to be comfortable. Yeah, it's not designed for that. It is when that unsaved person comes in and they become uncomfortable. That's what God uses to draw them. Mm -hmm. But if we compromise the word, what are we doing? We're making them comfortable. That's why we're not winning souls. Mm. 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 Listen, listen, the word of God, when we're preaching without mm. substance will make surface Christians. That's why mm. you have Christians who are comfortable being ankle deep. Wow. Mm -mm. That's the problem. That's that's where it is, right there. It starts right at the pulpit. Preaching without substance makes surface will make surface Christians. Mm -hmm. Will make surface Christians. Mm -hmm. So that is the call. As, it, as Minister Arnell said, sermonettes make Christianettes. Mm -hmm. Sermonettes make Christianettes. Now, now, the question tonight is Do you have a desire to grow? Mm -hmm. You got to answer that question mm -hmm. internally. Do I really have a desire to grow? <laughs> God, I really have a desire to go where the Holy Spirit leads me. Yes. So I really have that desire. Mm -hmm. that, those are the people God can use. That, that's how the river flows when I'm open to what God desires. Mm -hmm. 
in Ms. Right. Mosley, that, that ain't yeah. something easy to, to say either, you know, nope. just to say it, you know, nope. because it's, it's so easy to say that. And then when the time come, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a mixed personality there, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we got to mean what we say mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, because you love it, because God ain't going to force you, but he, you, if you love and fear him, you're going to do the things that, even even if you put up an effort and try by the power of the Holy Spirit, and if you try in your flesh, you ain't going to do it. Amen. You know, okay, because the, exactly flesh right. is ain't, the flesh is nothing filthy. It ain't nothing but filthy rags, like the Bible says. And you have to experience that. I experienced it. It ain't nothing. It's nothing. It's no good. Mm, amen. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anything? I've just been rolling here. Anybody else? <laughs> You, you, look, when you start asking the Lord to use you, mm -hmm. you start asking the Lord, um, you know, Father, I want to, I know the plans you have for me, and no. I know their plans are good and out of evil, and so, no. you know, I want to fulfill my purpose. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All mm -mm. I can say is you just better give them a blank piece of paper, mm -hmm. because it's not going to be how you think, what mm -hmm. you think, what you yep. want, mm -hmm. because you cannot be honestly open with that declaration that's right without understanding he's god mm -hmm. and his ways are not your ways and so if you really do mm -hmm. then you're going to have to understand there are going to be emotions you're going to go through that that's going to be tested they're going to be new fears new a, a whole new realm of being stretched in your faith because you you're going somewhere that you haven't been right man. And when you're comfortable where you've always been, I mean, after a while, yeah, you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. But that's what stretching is. Mm -hmm. And so you you just can't say unless you really mean it and you're willing to count the cost because it's going to be a challenge. But if you want to know him, you know, like Paul said, you know, you're going to realize it's going to cost me something. There's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some trials because that's how God prepares us for what we've said we want him to do. I know. Um, but that's why we say. Amen. Amen. I, I agree with you. I really agree with you. And mm. when you were saying some stretching, I had that to happen to me uh, mm -hmm. for the last two or three weeks. They brought in six women that mm -hmm. sleep in the street and uh, up underneath the bridge and mm -hmm. who carry bags and stuff with them mm -hmm. and carts with them, the mm -hmm. ones you see. And I had them this week and uh i never had that population to deal directly by myself with them yes. being the only female and it stretched me mm -hmm. and i and it stretched me and god said to mm -hmm. show me some it, it, teach me some endurance with them and 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 some love for them and some mm -hmm. i mean he took it took me y'all don't know it took me and i love them i love them I, I i watched them and the first thing and i thought about it i said no they didn't ask the, they didn't ask for mental illness they didn't say give me some mental illness they didn't say that that's what they got and i just had to love them and once i love them and just i had to check on them twice a day to make sure they didn't mess those rooms up and they one of them messed it up and they they were respectful one of them she slammed door in my face the way time i went there though slam door in my face and I, and I just looked at, at first I got real angry with her I didn't say nothing mm -hmm. but she kind of I felt insulted mm -hmm. but then God had me just and just do just to understand her and just to deal with it you know I was stretched mm -hmm. I was stretched yes and um mm -hmm. I just I, I I love them because guess what nobody nobody want them nobody want them mm -hmm. they had nowhere mm -hmm. to go Mm. And so, mm -hmm. um, they gone. They 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 was. I had one, and she just that woman. She broke my heart. She 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 tried to get a brother, and she tried to call him call him up, and um, she couldn't dial the phone. So I, I went and I did dialed it for her in yeah. Ohio, mm -hmm. and she said, "So and so, can I come stay with you?" Mm -hmm. He said, "No, I got ten children. You can't come." Mm -hmm. I told him. I said, "She's on the street." He said, I can't, I can't help her. 
and it just broke my heart. So I'm, so I'm saying, you know, God, God just teaches us. You, like you say, God, He just teaches us so many things, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, and it just made me love her more. She yeah. wears two and three hats on her head. You probably done seen her walking mm. through with a bunch of stuff. And every time they go out, they take a whole lot of stuff, all they stuff with them. And they got their room. They take all their stuff. There's nothing in there, but they be taking it anyway. And I just, God just showing me, you know, to love them because he love, he love them. He love them. Yes. Well, you know, um, mm-hmm. there's this quote. I want to read this again from A.W. Tozer. Um, right. The Pursuit of God. Um, mm-hmm. And in the, in the chapter, he makes this statement. It was just so good. I just want to share this again. He says, right. this is because we're talking about the desire to grow. But he says mm-hmm. this. He says, complacency is a deadly foe for all spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. Acute desire must be present or there will be no manifestation of Christ to his people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, if I, yeah. all I want to do is sit still or yeah. as we talked about, become stagnant, there's yeah. no growth. Mm. Yep. There, there's going to be no growth. Um, yeah. that won't be affected to anybody else. Because remember, the idea of what God put in us, we have been called to be a conduit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are a conduit. What God has put in us is not designed for it to sit there, it's designed to flow. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is designed to flow. Do you see this river in this text? The river's not sitting still, it's flowing. If it mm-hmm. sat still, it would become stagnant and it would be no ability for new growth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, has, there has to be a desire for us to want to grow and move and be better. Amen. Without a doubt. Amen. There has to be. Yes. And even on our Zoom right now, all of our yes. mics that are muted, we that's almost a part of that stagnation of not of not sharing, of mm-hmm. of, of being <laughs> complacent, of looking, <laughs> not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> so I encourage everyone yourself yeah. and share yeah. because that is how we benefit from one another. Mm-hmm. We benefit from one another, especially mm-hmm. encouraging one another in the word. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 I think sometimes we, we don't want to share because we're scared we'll say the wrong thing. But mm. when we're talking about Jesus, mm. we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But it's I think true. that's some some of the reasons is fear. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm wrong, though. No, what, you're not. God is not giving us the spirit of fear. fear. Exactly right. Love. Love. And, Love. A, and a power. Love. 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 And, and when we're among the brethren, when we're among one another, when we're among the sisters and the brothers, th- there's mm-hmm. that encouragement that even if something is said that's wrong, but doesn't God give grace? Can yeah. we give yes. grace? Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Anybody you know, else? I come, to Mike. come on, talk to us. Come I come to Bible, I come to Bible study because I'm I'm I need to uh-huh. Hello. Lead the you want to say something? I'm sorry, Deacon Moses. I mentioned mostly. <laughs> Okay, anybody no, else? I was, I was, I was uh, really admiring what Linda Stewart was saying, you know, like how deep, you know, the really um, that type of love that that's really um, godly love when you um, with the outcasts, when you can love them and be so um, so caring and so loving about them, because some people don't, um, you know, don't even want nothing to do with uh, people like that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we got to look at this generation we in too now as far as the kids and stuff, you know. Like kids out here, I, I was in a, a staff meeting yesterday, mm-hmm. and um, this lady was talking about, um, and I, I know she, had, I, I, you know, I haven't really talked to her deep, but she was expressing um, even about the kids that's um, not graduating and stuff like that, and how, um, the, you know, the teachers and stuff, you know, they just can't like let these kids know that they don't care about them. Mm. And she was explaining how she, I, I told her today, I said, you know. I, I ain't going to everything she said, but I explained her today that I really appreciate, you know, what she said and the love that she had for, you know, the children that are out school and stuff. And uh, she was saying that one time she had um, said something to a child and that child went out and got killed. 
and she said she felt so bad. So now she just have a heart, you know, for you know for other kids and stuff like that. Because sometimes we learn from our mistakes. We can say something wrong to someone, and something can happen to that person, and that person go out and die. Mm. I mean, and then it's over. You know, you feel the pain of it. So we have to be careful the way we treat people. That's you know, true. the way we talk to people mm-hmm. and things like that. But that was a powerful um, message mm-hmm. uh, Sunday. And it was, you know, very convicting, you know, to mm-hmm. me personally. Mm-hmm. But I just praise the Lord, praise the Lord for how he used you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Come on, talk to us tonight. Talk to us. Yes. And so far as uh, uh, being, uh, being the, 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 the flow, that is, uh, in my case, uh, when I tried to be comfortable, and I tried to be comfortable, God will let me be comfortable. Mm. Every, time I get, every time I get comfortable, he will. Uh, right from my life that I say that, that, that kind of make shake me up or something happened to me personally, I just yeah. he, let me be. I try to get comfortable. He won't let me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I try though. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, sometimes you know, you say, "Well, it's not true. right." Yeah, but, mm-hmm. then, but then he then he move you like Linda. He send us some, you know, like he send somebody. Mm-hmm. There you up, you know, you go. Yeah, you go again. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. as I've been saved, he's always had several people they'll stir me up when right. I try, when I try to slag right. back. I'll use that term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. yeah, it's a, it's um it's a lady up that um stays over here at the Giants over here off of Liberty Road in Milford. Uh, she stays on a side corner where they used to uh keep the carts, and um she made herself a little bed and a little shelter there. That's and, a and 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 so me and Myra and Kaya, we had got together and we went to Walmart and we brought her some stuff, you know, that she needed. And she was very grateful. We gave her tracks and and we didn't gave it to her about three or four times. And and it's like she she when she see the truck come up, she'd like she just be smiling. She'd be plaiting her hair and she looked like she's getting a little better. But I, I said always, did you read the track? Did you did you see what Jesus said to you? And she said yes. And she just smiled and said yes. And I said, well, don't stop, you know, because I said this this gift is from Him, not from us. And she really appreciate that, you know. And and it's just something that you know I take a joy in in doing, like Sister um, Cheryl do, and and a few others, and. It feel it makes you feel like you're one of ch- God's children when you do that because before then I wouldn't have cared less about what the woman thought, what the woman did, you know. But you know, but to give is 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 a lot to appreciate God for thinking about someone like that, you know. But that could have been me, <laughs> and I'm not trying to brag or try to get any accolades or anything. I'm just trying to say. That's just what he put into my eyes and our eyes. And we did something to try to help. Amen. 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 I wasn't going to get into it, but I guess I'll share. Yesterday, when I was leaving the church, they keep telling me when I say they're talking about those who work with me at the church with me a lot. They say, look, don't stay down here too late. I just find myself, you know, mm-hmm. involved in, right? They, they, one time, some couple of them said, look, you got to leave by four o'clock. Well, it's four o'clock if I'm doing something or looking at the scripture, I forget. So yesterday, I'm going to the clock, right? So mm-hmm. as, as, it, as it happened, I came out of the church, you know, the little gate, I, was, I had my back, the church, so I locked the gate. Mm-hmm. I, I looked, to, I didn't see anybody. I looked to my left, I seen a, a person coming down the street. He was wearing a black, he was all dressed in black. This young, relative young fella. Mm-hmm. So he came up to me and I was just finishing the lock, you know, because I had to turn back around. And he came up to me and said, uh, he said, he said, you, 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 you must be an elder at that church. But before I could say yes or no, he started saying, he started saying, he started saying that 23rd Psalm. So now I thought, well, should I, should I say this 23rd Psalm with him? Or I said, one time I started off to do that, but I said, better keep my eyes open. You know, I, I, I said, I said, it's Psalm with him. So. <laughs> after we, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> this actually happened. So, so yeah. after we finished it, after he finished the song, he said, look, I, I need some money to get me some food. So I said, okay. I said, but do you know Jesus like that? Mm-hmm. He said, but I need me some money. He said, I said, I need some money to get some food. I, mm-hmm. said, yeah. I said, I'll help you. I said, I'll help you, but I, I got to share some with you. Mm-hmm. I said, would, would you like a changed life? Mm-hmm. He said, but I want, he, said, he kept on saying he wanted food. So I gave him a dollar, right? The coldest attention, right? 
So, so, <laughs> that's, that's, so, so, so she had the gospel with him. Yeah. But then he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, this, if I gave you a dollar, he said, that's not enough. Huh. I said, oh. So I said, I only got another dollar, which was true. I didn't lie. I only had like two dollars, right? I gave him right. a dollar. He keep right. on talking, right? I was trying to get him to keep him talking. Mm -hmm. But a couple of things he said. One one thing I could I could de de detect detect. Mm -hmm. He knew he knew something about the church. He kept saying, you, you, "I know you are elder at the church." And he said, "I know you are, you must be elder, one of the, one of the elders at the church." Then I, then I said I said, "Well, what does that got to do with?" You? I said, "I want to talk a little bit about your salvation." Your, I told him I, I gave a plan of salvation to him. But mm -hmm. then he told me he said, uh, "Look, I'm not gonna hurt you." This, honestly, this, he, he, I'm talking. I'm a man. That, I mean, a man ever told me that. Dude. I mean, maybe I, I don't know, maybe I'm sure that I was scared. Or something. I'm not gonna, he said, I'm not gonna hurt you. Kind of stepped back and come. I said, No, that's not it. I'm gonna tell you. I kept on talking on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I kept on repeating the gospel to him, to him, repeating the gospel to him. So then, I, after, I, after I gave my last dollar, I said, Now, I said, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for you now. I'm gonna pray for you. So I just gave you the gospel. If you confess that you're a sinner, you need mm -hmm. a savior. So it's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Jesus is Savior. Mm -hmm. so, so first, I started praying. He didn't pray. He, he was just silent. So mm -hmm. I looked up at him. He had his eyes on my head. I, I said, well, I'm going to finish this prayer with my eyes over to him. You know, I'm just telling you, real dynamic sense. I'm telling you about what God will do. Okay, so, so, so then I, so I, so I opened up my eyes. I said, but I to go all the way. So after I finished <laughs> praying for him, I said, do you want to receive Jesus? Yeah. He looked at me and said, no. And then he, he, then he started back down. So he turned back and laughed. He said, I know I know you are elder. This. I know you must be one of the elders. He went on down the street. His name is Ben. Put him on your prayer list. Ben, I don't want to say anything because, like, some I don't. I'm not boasting, but I'm telling you, right, right. God right. will put you in a situation where you try. I was mm -hmm. just trying to get home to tell you the truth. I was trying to get home because I knew mm -hmm. I stayed down there too late, and right. I knew I was trying to get home every time that happened happened once before. Right. So, so yeah. there are those in the people keep me in prayer that Amen. I would remember to leave. But I can't be. In fear. I can't yes. be in fear because yeah. God placed me in a place to share the God. Right. I can't be right. in fear. Right. I cannot be in fear. Right. But also, I remember the lady that got killed over there at South, at South, uh, at Southern, at Southern. She was opening up the church. Yeah. She got, right. You got to be have wisdom, but don't be afraid. You, 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 right. Right. you can't. You can't be afraid, but you got to, but you got to do what God called you to. I was going to steal God regardless. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pray for me that I would be obedient when stay there. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. I'm trying to, you know, a couple, a couple of my, my co workers, they try to stay down there with me, so make me leave at a certain time. But I, 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 I tell them, I said, wait a minute, I got one more thing to do. They'd be in the hall looking. <laughs> <laughs> I think they said, look, I'm, leave, I'm leaving today. He's going to have to be out here by. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, <laughs> As we um you know kind of kind of close it out now, I just want I want to raise these questions to you again. Close out. First mm -hmm. question is, wouldn't you like to experience the abundance of God at our fellowship again? Wouldn't you like to see that? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you like to yeah. see that. I mean, to see you know a lot of change, people getting saved. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you want to see that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like the presence of God and his power to be with us every time we meet? Yes. Amen. What I mean by that is that you see lives change. You see mm. people's lives change. We know we're not talking about just your four experiences. We're talking about lives change. That's the evidence. That's the real evidence of the power of God with us, that lives are changed. Okay. When you want to see people who have been who are out of fellowship running back to the fellowship, right? Yeah. Uh, I would love to see happen. that. I would love to see that. That's what I wanted to say, right. Minister Mosley. That's what I wanted to say. I would love to see us to do more inviting people to church. Yeah. I really would like to see that. Yeah. Because if you don't, you gotta ask them, and don't be afraid to ask them to come to church with them. If it means take them to lunch afterwards or something. Buy them a sandwich afterwards, but we need to invite people to the church more. Mm -hmm. That's how I got that. If somebody hadn't invited me, I, I wouldn't have never been there. Amen. 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 Well, it, listen, in order for the things that we just said to happen, just like Sister Linda said, it starts with us. It starts with us being open to the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit that what He has put in us can flow through us from the sanctuary out into society so we make we make impact outside the walls amen
So we got to make impact outside the walls. We got to make impact outside the walls. Amen? Yes, we do. Amen. 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 All right. Well, I guess we'll stop there and then we'll... So let me pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for our time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for our discussion. Thank you for those who shared. We pray, mm -hmm. Father, that you would continue to do a work in the hearts of your people. That, Father, we would be a vibrant assembly, Lord, that will be fruitful, that will be that will make impact, Lord, to be a light on that corner, Lord. We just thank you. We honor you tonight for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank everybody. Bye.